Blast off! Hello there. <laughs> Everyone, and welcome to the EDH Jank Center podcast. This is a cheeky little show where we break down five janky budget or underutilized cards every other week. These cards may not be the best, most efficient, or even good, but here at the Jank Center, we believe every single card deserves a chance to shine. As always, I am your host, Jordan, and today I am joined by my co host, the insurmountable Crest Lightning, I don't know everyone. How many of these words are you going to be able to pull off before? You have you start like cycling. You forget which ones, and then you start like cycling back. No, I have a list, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna make sure that I have never repeated one hey, before. I'm, he- I'm here. Yeah, Cress is here. Cress, how was your it's, week, baby? It's been a week. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, an emotional roller coaster, if you will. Ooh, baby. The okay. highlight being, I have. So I am American. We met in America. That is true. We did meet My in America. My wife is Canadian, and she's real and totally exists. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I moved here uh, to Canada with her for school for her school yeah and uh i just have been doing immigration stuff with lawyers and it's been super fun you know like really 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 fun oh gosh um (laughs) (laughs) for like two years for almost like two years and today i oh well not today this week Uh, i've got i'm officially a permanent resident yes so i have a card coming in the mail everything's legit so finally yeah that's amazing i'm honestly so happy for you i thank you like i know how hard it's been you've been we've had many conversations yeah. about it and yeah that's that's must be so affirming and a weight lifted off your shoulders for sure. I'm sure it's like nice to like think that i can sort of like build a community out here now without feeling anxious or having any sort of like you know Cause like if something happened and I had to leave, right? Like anything mm-hmm. during that like right. processing time, anything can happen. <laughs> it's all very delicate, and you don't really want to like right. do too much or like bring too much attention onto yourself or give the government any reason to like be like, hey, actually, no, yeah. you know, anything else that was yes. like cool or unique Absolutely. that happened to you this week? What, um, what, Persona what was Three Reload on? came out. <laughs> oh. Okay, well then we yeah, I'm sure I'm sure your wife missed you while no, uh, actually my wife sits that. on the couch and knits while I play Persona and plays it with me. That's beautiful. That is actually incredible. Uh Marissa and I do a similar thing where we try to be alone yeah. together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like do our separate activities, but we're still together. So that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, that. she plays games too. She reads books. She's she's a booktuber. She reads books. That's true. And so we're always we're always just kind of hanging out in the in the living room together. Uh, with the cat yeah. and the cat is mad at me right now because i'm at my office desk <laughs> <laughs> we should get your cat on uh yeah, five, five cards, cards or die. die you think as he's got favorite magic cards she's like i like to sit on i think on, so i like to sit on specifically this <laughs> marchessa marchessa is my favorite card to sit on essie would I like marchessa think so. for That's sure the, why i said it it's the energy. Are you are you been talking about pets a lot? Because uh, I we have cause we have you sent me oh. you sent me that message about my my parents' dog, my dad's dog. We have. So what happened was <laughs> we picked up a stray dog right. on the side of the uh, on the side of the road. I think about a week and a half ago. And my partner Marissa, she's so 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 in love with all animals, and I am not so much. Like I, I love myself a cute little dog. But when or they cat, try to kill but... you because they you can't breathe. <laughs> exactly it's personal yeah but i don't know for whatever reason i mean we pass stray dogs all the time but it's like for whatever reason this one was i don't know we were just sort of drawn to it and i just stopped without even thinking about it you know yeah. And we picked it up and it had like, like a broken oh, leg. Oh, buddy. Yeah. And so we like took care of it for about a, a day or so and then got it picked up and stuff. We couldn't keep it. We couldn't even afford to like yeah. keep it even if it was like yeah. healthy. But because it had like a broken leg, we were just like, oh my God. Yeah, unfortunately. And it, it just sort of like made Marissa very of sad. <laughs> and uh, honestly, it made me very sad. I, I felt like I knew this dog in like another lifetime well, or something. Well, you knew it in this one. You helped it in this one. So Right. But that's what I mean. It, it felt like a kindred soul or sure. something like that i don't know it just i yeah and so it's been sort of on our minds this week and so i was th- we were thinking about dogs and i was thinking about my my favorite kind of dog and i think it's a rottweiler i think yeah, really truly, just sweeties like they're just so cute and just so do I. I like a big dog if i was gonna get a dog i would get a big dog you know they're really smart 
so they're like they're just like constantly thinking uh, you can you can like see that they're thinking yeah like when i met your dog at your wedding i was just so yeah like yeah enamored. it's I like almost like so they much. can talk to you right like they're like they're speaking to you in, in english right they're so so smart. expressive i even the dog that mm-hmm. we picked up the eyes were just so so expressive that's what really got me you know like really made me emotional was just seeing that like it was in pain sure. clearly you know and hopefully now it's 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 better but like yeah anyways to switch mm-hmm. topics real quick Another thing that happened this week that was very cute was we, oh, me yeah. and you, sort of had an impromptu <laughs> little yeah, we, date we night. Were to... <laughs> it started out. <laughs> it started out as like a like chat about the channel and like the podcast and like sort of strategize or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we blinked and we were on the phone for like yeah. three hours, and all of a sudden I was part of your Nintendo yeah, family Bella's plan. Yeah, was there, and at the end and, of it, and Marissa was there, and we we're hanging out yeah yeah it was so cute and we had so much fun that was honestly really much needed for us All definitely right. um, on another podcast i can talk about video games for hours and hours and hours <laughs> yeah i was gonna say very briefly i've been because so for those of you who don't know if you're on a nintendo family plan you can download like free emulators on the switch that are like games from so i'll just i'll just before people get mad at you for what you're saying you have to be on nintendo's like premium membership so there's two memberships there's like just the online membership and oh, then okay. there's they're like premium membership and so our family plan that we added you to is the premium option so it is the like gotcha. uh, it okay. is the higher okay. tier but it's like not that bad yeah really cheap uh, it's yeah. you can have up to eight people on the family plan which is makes it super cheap um like eight accounts and yeah. it's yeah you get all these you get all these you get free animal crossing dlc you get free mario kart dlc you get yeah you get uh switch online's like absolutely worth it yeah like you said you get all these emulators yeah we get like game boy advance emulators there was what else was there and six and six four there's game boy color there's super nintendo yeah. nintendo i think there's sega genesis and neo geo games there's so many like cool like free games like for, so nostalgic for pe- people our age i feel like because we all grew up playing those consoles and those games for me as soon as i saw super mario 3 or Mar- uh, super mario brothers 3 advanced 4 the little platformer <laughs> i've been trying to play that and it's so difficult I have been rage quitting so much and I forgot what rage quitting even felt like. Like I have not done that in so long. I used to be so nice at the game when I was a kid, but man, you had it's so like many hours on your so little game hard. boy, you know, you, you like to just like yeah. chill and you could put it away and you could come back to it whenever <laughs> it wasn't like, uh, like yeah. this is my gaming session right now for, you know, 40 minutes or whatever, or an hour or whatever, like, you have to block time for games. And so when things get frustrating, 100%. Uh, you're like, oh, I only have like 20 minutes left. I got to get through this. Otherwise, I'm going to forget everything I did today. <laughs> but I've been having a lot of fun, even though it sounds like I'm not. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know what game I love? Uh, Mahjong. Magic the Gathering. Oh, so close. <laughs> uh, we almost, that was that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> Speaking of Magic the Gathering, we should start talking about cards. We have I feel at like. least five of them we got a, here today. We got a good list of all ca- cards that are all under a dollar today. <laughs> a lot of them are under 50 cents. A lot of them are under 30 cents. These are like some super cheap, some super cheap kiddos. So let's get started with our first card of the day, which is Elegant Entourage, which is three and a green creature elf druid from streets of new capenna it has an ability called alliance whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control target creature other than elegant entourage gets plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn and it's a four four That's pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah i mean every it seems as though the cards printed in new capenna every single one of them is good in commander it's by and large my favorite set I think, ever in Magic the Gathering. Not only for the flavor, but also just because it seems like every every single week I get another card into my field of vision and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Or someone like drops it in the Discord and I'm like, oh, wow, like I, I didn't know there was a card that did that. And then I look at this, the set symbol and it's three to <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, OK, well, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. They were just the game designers or the, I mean, the set designers were on one when they were well, designing I think, the set. I think that comes with having the freedom of designing for a tricolor, tricolor themes, you know, without trying to have to fit. Oh, right. Like enough. you can do yeah. so much. You can be like, oh, OK we're doing this more creative piece like i know that the new capenna decks are real rad um like the commander precons and each of them has like their own thing going on right but yeah you can do a lot i think with 
with three colors, right? So yeah, there's so much room to maneuver in all those color combos. And I'm sure because of that, this card and car a bunch of cards from this, I'm, I'm sure this set was a really fun to play in limited oh, probably. when you're like drafting in the LGS and things like that, or drafting with friends. I've only played limited once and it was at your wedding. Right. And I had a blast. I thought that was a lot we of did fun. With, uh, Command Masters 2? Commander, Commander Legends. Legends. Commander two. Legends. Yeah, we did it with the uh, the OG the Commander, first Legends. Commander Legends. Commander Legends, that was a long time ago. I know, I know, crazy. A anyways, this card is just super solid. It's only eleven cents, but this is coming down four mana, four four. This is already just a great stat line for your money, or rather for your mana. And then on top of that, I mean, token decks are going to eat this thing up. Right. Like imagine just spamming the board with tokens and giving a creature on your board like plus 12, plus 12 and a trample. I, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless here and infinite power buffs can also happen. You know, if you're generating creatures infinitely, there are tons of ways to do that. So this can just create a gigantic beater. And I think that's amazing. And I wanted to talk about specifically in in elf ball or elf token decks. Mm -hmm. because this card is also yeah. an elf and with cards like cloud key or urza's incubator or just plain old like mana dorks which there are a lot of in elf decks yeah right you can get the ball rolling even faster and be casting a ton of elves and then making a ton of elf tokens depending on which way you go this card will slot perfectly right, right in there so speaking of slotting on, a card into a commander deck <laughs> <laughs> speaking of i gotta pull up my commander for this because i want to I want to list these commanders that we're going to find homes for. I would put this personally. I think the best home for this is Abomination of Lanawar, Whoa. which is one black green legendary creature elf horror. It was originally printed in Commander Legends, I believe. Okay. And it has Vigilance and Menace, which is great stats. Absolutely fantastic. Abomination of Lanawar's power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control plus the number of elves in your graveyard. Right. So in an Abomination of Lanawar deck, you're going to be running a ton of elves. You're going to want that. So having Elegant Entourage as part of your shell means that you can be buffing up, and this is obviously a Voltron leaning right. build, you can buff up your Abomination of Lanawar every time a creature is entering your battlefield. And that can just create, and giving a trample on top right. of that. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be swinging for tons and tons of damage. And also, <laughs> I don't know if you're looking at the art for Abomination of Land of War right now, but uh, that is I that actually, is pretty gnarly. Have you read the flavor text for this? No, it's, no, no, it's no. It's I'm quote, about to... run, screamed its living mouths. Come, cried its dead ones. <laughs> That's what I was making the face at. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's fun. really fucking funny that's a really funny they sometimes you know i wonder what it's like to be designing these cards and pitching <laughs> like are there a bunch of writers is it like snl where they pitch a bunch of ideas no idea. for flavor text and they're like yeah that's the one because if so that's really funny that a bunch of professionals in an office were like yeah that's the one can we just that's imagine it. for a second if we go back to <laughs> elegant entourage that the party that they're they're guarding for is a is this <laughs> <laughs> abomination of leona war Oh my god. Yeah, it's not Jetmir at all. It's just it's just a big ball of alive and dead yeah. elves. <laughs> They're oh like, sorry, gosh. you can't join our giant pile of dead elves. But the half the dead bodies on the abomination are like, no, please come, please, <laughs> please. come inside. But like the living <laughs> ones are like, no, no. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty dope card. I think any any sort of token deck, like I said, would yeah, love this, especially if you're going tall. Speaking of token decks, uh, I my commander slot in for this is I think the one that this card is designed for. Um, because I was I'm trying to stick mm -hmm. uh thematic here, and I think this would be a really fun card to build. And that is Ginny Fey, Jetmere's second, which is oh, right. Yes. Yeah, legendary creature, elf druid. If you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many two two green cat tokens with haste, or that oh many God. three one green dog creature tokens with vigilance. <laughs> so you are creating a shit ton of tokens, getting all those buffs off of it. Oh, so I yeah. think that I think that's her party. I think it's Ginny Faye's party yeah. that is on the card. Definitely. Um, definitely. But man, New Capanna, though, what flavor? Absolutely. I, I mean, I could literally just have a whole episode talking about all the cards from New Capenna. I think I actually have done that multiple times on the channel. Mm -hmm. There are so many times where, like, before the podcast, before you were even my editor, I was always just talking about, like, how New 
new competitor was just right. incredible, incredible. So many cards that were amazing in that set. But you know what else is amazing? What? Moving on to the next card. Oh, that was smooth. Yeah, I'm getting better. Hey, it's episode six. <laughs> so I should, it's good that I am, you know, it'd be bad if like I was still getting horrible doing sloppy transitions. Actually the worst. Even. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. All right, here we go. Here we yeah. go. Second card of the day. We're going to take a look at a little enchantment aura called Madcap Skills. It is one and a red enchantment aura originally printed in Gate Crash. It says enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus zero and can't be blocked except by two or more creatures, meaning it has menace. Sounds like somebody from like the early 2000s on a skateboard coming up to me asking me to show me. <laughs> They're madcap skills. Yeah, the artist, the art on this card specifically looks, it's just like, yeah, that dude skates or like is like the stereotypical goth in like a early 2000s movie. Yeah, but I kind of like mean? that he's fire dancing. It is very sick. I mean, I think, I believe this is Rakdos, what they're picturing Correct. This is this here is, on the on the card. Yeah, this is the like, the performing troupe of Rakdos. Right, 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 right. He's showing off his skills. I believe the madcaps are like a group of the performers. Ah, uh, okay, that's good to know. That makes sense because this and Ra the Rakdos Guild is all about like, it's like performance, but also mixed in with like torture. But like chaos. Question so. mark? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like a all bit chaotic. In, all in, in service of their demon lord. <laughs> yeah, Rakdos. I always forget that they're named after... Well, I guess that's not all true, right? Hmm. All the guilds are not all named after their leaders. No, some of them are like derivations of the leaders. Like the leaders were a part of it before like they founded it and called it something for something but like, gotcha is it, okay is it, like, well that's right because rakdos is a cult technically right correct. like i've heard that's that's like a thing yeah it's called the, the cult, of, cult it's called the cult of rakdos, cult of rakdos. They worship, right they worship the demon lord the Rak demon rakdos right 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 well the flavor text here is also great the larger the crowd <laughs> the harder it is for them to run away hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had two options of running towards the uh, abomination of Lanawar or or running towards the, the cult of Rakdos, the cult of Rakdos, which which is the two? I don't know. I feel like maybe I could convince the the alive bodies on Abomination of Lanawar to not hurt me. Mm. I, like I'm pretty I'm pretty good at talking people down. But what if the, the like, cult of Rak Rakdos? What if they, they just want to hurt me? But what if they hurt you in like a nice way, in like a sexy way? I'm not into that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's a no go for me. Okay, I'm good. But you know what? Let's just talk about how good this card is for a second because this is one of my like pet cards. I have had this. So the first time, like when we were first getting into Magic in about 2019, mm -hmm. or rather when I was first getting into Magic, you had already been into it for a while. True. This was in LA. We went to uh, our local gaming store, and we I guess. I guess at the time they had this just like plastic bag full of like bulk from various sets. Mostly it was core set 20, I remember. Mm -hmm. But there were some other cards in there that were like just from scattered sets, d different yeah. commons and things. And I pulled this card out of that little bag when I brought when I got home. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And proceeded to never put it in a deck. Like it always just almost made the cut and never once was like in the list. Right. I just I was always cutting it, but I love this card. I, you know, for two mana, you're getting a plus three buff on your creature's power plus menace. Yeah, menace is, I think, mana? maybe ah. one of the most, like, underutilized keywords. I think, like, how many games I've played where menace has gotten me the win is yes. a lot more than I feel like it should for as many decks as I have cards with menace in it. It's so sneaky good, you know? It forces a way different game plan. I mean, we're all so used to, generally speaking, I'd say, like, 80% of combat phases in Magic the Gathering, we're doing one-for-one -one trades. We ascend an attacker, you assign one block forces your opponent to think differently mm -hmm. and assess their own board and what they're willing to get rid of in order to mitigate the threat that you just pose by For attacking sure. them. For and sure. I think that this is a great little cheap way to do that, especially in builds that are focused around this. So what I was going to say was I wanted to put this in a, in a deck where we're going to be attacking with one creature and making it very, very strong that is called a voltron strategy for those who do not yeah. know just like voltron um, a, because voltron which a lot i don't of even know what that is okay, by the way voltron is like a like a robot like a megazord almost like before megazords i think it's older the power rangers is it like so is it like gundams 
No, it's like a it's like a it's like a robot that that each like it's like controlled by like five different people and mm-hmm. they come together to build one giant robot. So each of their individual uh, parts comes together to build one like the, okay. the Deus Ex Machina for the episode. That makes extreme sense that uh, that makes sense why they would call it that because you're equipping a creature your with a bunch of commander is like is your Voltron right. is your is your robot right. that you're attaching everything to. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank you for always educating me on this stuff because it's cool. I'm usually wrong um, on stuff too, so <laughs> <laughs> I just say I'm just saying things. It sounds. I mean, you and me both, honestly. Yeah, you and me both. That's what a podcast is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and hey, the people who are listening really do enjoy listening to people doing and saying stuff. So true. That's yeah. fair. Well, by the way, thanks, Andrew. If you're out there, thanks for listening again. Oh, that you remember guy. Andrew? Yeah, you almost got <laughs> to a car crash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope I didn't scare him just now, yeah. honestly. That actually... Andrew, if you're listening, uh, just please keep your eyes on the road. Anyways, I wanted to talk about its synergy with Krenko Tin Street Kingpin. You would be... You would like Krenko. <laughs> Listen, this is the this is I think the the less busted one, but still very 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 good. Yeah, for sure. Famously, this is the first commander deck that I or the, the first thing that I gave away in the Discord uh, every mm-hmm. month. Uh, we do a, a giveaway every month in our Discord. Um, you can check that out in the descriptions below Discord, in whatever Discord, Discord, platform Discord, you're listening Discord. on. <laughs> but Krenko, I built a thirty dollar deck with that. I've written an EDH rec article about this deck. It's such an easy fun deck to play because it both goes tall and goes wide so and it allows you to use all these fun little there are tons of enchantments like madcap skills in red that just give like these little power buffs for cheap mana and on krenko krenko's ability says whenever krenko tin street kingpin attacks put a plus one plus one counter on it then create a number of one one red goblins red goblin creature tokens equal to krenko's power so for two mana you're buffing up krenko by three and on a single attack by krenko you're making five i believe yeah because you're putting the counter on as well five goblin tokens in one attack with just this madcap skills and i mean it gets exponential from there you can be buffing those tokens up you can continue buffing krenko up you can have multiple combat steps and be swinging krenko multiple times and making goblins i mean it gets pretty disgusting for a pretty good budget right and i also wanted to bring this up because that's sort of the whole idea behind the channel when i started it a couple years ago was there are ways to play with power and be a threat at the table with decks that are way more expensive than you for a budget you can absolutely do things as long as you're building synergistically. I think that there are plenty of options out there, and Krenko, I think, is one of them. And Madcap Skills is a great little tool in that deck. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I like it. I like I like everything about the philosophy of putting putting cards, finding places for these cards, right? Like, it's just so, so good. <laughs> It's very satisfying to me to do. I, I I find that it tickles my brain in the in the correct way. Yeah, like, no, I agree. I I I was jesting just because of how I feel about Krenko as a card, uh, but I. <laughs> you're not a fan of not a fan of goblins. <laughs> no, I I feel like goblins are the thing that like as somebody who started in like uh, a mono blue, uh, just like direct oh, sure. damage to me uh, is is like not. You know, it's kind of like. Goblins getting, like, war is like flashbacks. right a little bit it's kind of like the first like <laughs> oh man my, my strategy doesn't work against every deck there are checks and balances in this game um right, and it's right. sort of being the first uh check is sort of my experience with krenko fair enough but was that the original krenko the one that taps and creates goblins correct, correct. okay because i feel like in mono red there's not a lot of ways i mean i suppose the equipment is a great way to protect krenko tin street kingpin mm-hmm. but there, a voltron strategy can be mitigated pretty easily for sure uh with some single target removal and things like that for sure but this list i don't know if the person who won still has the deck i'm actually interested if you are listening please let me know if you still have it and play it because i'm thinking about maybe building it for myself because it's a pretty cheap deck to just build and just sort of play especially if you're a beginner yeah if you just want to play some like straightforward big dumb magic like i think that's a really fun deck to to include it in what what would you include madcap skills in what's your choice this time oh okay i uh, so i've got a couple because i think we talked about rakdos for a little bit so there are right. two rakdos commanders that i think would be fun to build and that this card Ooh, can okay. go into the first being yeah. obviously rakdos lord of riots 
uh, which Ooh, is yeah. a two black, two red demon legendary creature. You can't cast this spell unless opponents lost life this turn. It's got flying, trample, creature spells you ca- cast cost one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So Ooh, it's baby. kind of like attacking and then playing your your spells afterwards. But I think Menace, giving a 6-6 six, six flying trampler Menace with plus three as your commander swinging for yeah. nine damage that, you know, they need two cards to block it. Oh my I, God. I, I yeah, do think that that's so just good. like, yeah, I just think that that's a, a pretty easy cheap spell to put into a deck like this um the other card i picked just because i think it'd be really fun to build this deck uh is judith the scourge diva which is one colorless black red legendary creature human shaman other creatures you control get plus one plus zero whenever a non-token creature you control dies judith the scourge diva deals one damage to any target and it's a two two yeah I think, yeah, yeah. I think giving, you know, all your creatures plus one already, and then you can give it the plus three. It doesn't matter what its toughness is, because if it dies, then you're going to yeah. gain all that back. So you're at least getting rid of something on the table or you're dealing big damage. And yep. so I think it fits yep. in this deck. And I would I'd be more inclined to build this just because it's a cheaper cheaper option. But it's a cheaper commander to play. Um, it doesn't have oh, as true. many yes. caveats to get it onto the board. Yeah. And it just is like one of those like non-threatening commanders until it becomes threatening sure yeah 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 it flies under the radar for yeah. sure and also it's pretty flavorful right like it's she's the leader of the 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 show yeah she's one of yes. the three like main witches of uh, uh yeah of yeah this art for sure is also just very very cool shout out to wesley burt yeah whoever that is yeah absolutely. you did an amazing job <laughs> All right, well, that's that's a great that's a great little selection. I honestly would would prefer Rakdos. I just think that's. I a, think that's how you would play for sure. I mean, you like your you like just, your Voltron. You like your. But also, I'm thinking like a big stompy, maybe like dragons and demons like typo build mm-hmm. with Rakdos, where you know you're swinging in with if Rakdos is a, is enchanted with Madcap skills, right? That's a nine six flying trample menace, right? right. I mean, it's kind of and busted. Rakdos says that creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. For each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So, you so on your second nine, main, yeah. you're discounting giant, maybe Eldrazi's. You could go Eldrazi's with this too. Cast Evercool for like five. Cast some of the like some of the crazy <laughs> dragons for just like a couple red. Yeah, you're right. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, yeah, th- these are all great options. But uh, I think it's time for us to move on to uh, what is, in my opinion, the juiciest card of the day. I love this card. Uh, we just covered it in a in a short on the channel, but I wanted to talk about it at length on the pod. It's a it's a sorcery called Into the Maw of Hell. It's four red red sorcery. This is from Innistrad, the original Innistrad set. It says destroy target land. Into the Maw of Hell deals 13 damage to target creature. So this is definitely like the jankiest card on the list. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Today. (laughs) However, there's a few things I want to talk about here. So first of all, obviously the sorcery speed and the high mana cost are going to be immediate deterrence for most deck builders. This is a card that has, it does have homes and uh, we're going to talk about one specific one that is pretty nutty what it can do Mm -hmm. this is the prime example of a card that does not get a lot of love in a lot of decks but in the decks that it fits my god is it just it goes ballistic on its surface this destroys a target land so yeah that's pretty decent if someone has a pretty problematic land we're talking anything from a gaia's cradle to a rogue's passage right. and it's like six mana so it's late in the game it's not like you're getting right. rid of mana to play the game earlier on right like it's right it's this is not an mld kind of thing where you're being oppressive and sort of like ruining the game for everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, you can tell that uh, we've been we've been we've been pretty triggered by land destruction in the past. I got some feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. But yeah, and then into the Mon of Hell. I mean, if you are paying six for this, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a completely useless card because if you do pay six for this, I think you're getting a pretty good deal. Agreed. Destroying a problematic land plus Destroy. dealing 13 damage is going to kill most creatures. Mm-hmm. So you're guaranteed to hit something pretty big and pretty more.
more than likely pretty problematic for you right if you just straight cast this i don't know is there any is there any cards that you can sort of pair it with that if you deal the damage to them something happens well it's going to be sort of adjacent to that what i wanted to talk about was the home for this card that i found but i wanted to talk about its interaction that a that a discord member actually pointed out to me so the home that i found in the short that we did on this card is Toralf, God of Fury. Hmm. So that's two red, red, legendary creature god. This is one of the Kaldheim gods. And we go back to Kaldheim too. Kaldheim and Strixhaven. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Kaldheim, Strixhaven, New Capenna are just all fantastic. It has Trample, and it says, whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Toralf deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent and it's a five four mm -hmm. um it flips into an equipment uh on the other side but we're not going to talk about that today we don't really we do not really care about that so tor elf essentially is non-combat damage trample okay this is this is after doing my due diligence but it goes something a little bit like this let's say for example your opponent has any semblance of a bunch of one one creatures or a bunch of tokens mm -hmm. you have tor elf on the field a thing, a permanent that doubles damage, and you cast into the Maw of Hell. What's going to happen is that damage doubler is going to double the amount of damage that into the Maw of Hell deals to the 1-1. One, one. So you point into the Maw of Hell at one of the 1-1s. One, you deal 26 total damage to it. Toralf is going to have 25 of that damage dealt in excess pointed at any other target. Now what you can do is point that 25 excess at the next 1-1, one, one, and because it's Toralf now dealing the excess damage, that is a separate instance of damage, and so the doubler is going to see that damage, turn it into 50 damage, you point that 50 at the next 1-1, one, one, turn it into 49, Toralf will trigger again, You'll turn that into, what is that, 98 damage? Yep. And then you're getting into totals where you can just, even after two, completely nuke an opponent from the game. Yeah. Just immediately incinerate their life total, and it just goes bananas. It is just absolutely... All the Reddit, when I was just looking on Reddit, all the Reddit comments about this card when it was spoiled were like, is this the best red commander ever? Like, people were just, like, <laughs> freaking out. And honestly... Yeah, I mean, it's cool. But if you could pull this off... That is satisfying for everybody at the table to be like, oh, yeah. how'd you get that doubler on the board to stay on the board? Yeah. Oh, there's a doubler in Toralf. And, you know, like, we're going to know that going in with a Toralf deck, <laughs> but a lot of people aren't. Right. right. I mean, I had no so idea about this interaction. We know we might not have the removal to take care of it, where somebody else who does wouldn't know at the table. Mm -hmm. And even if we explain it, it's like it's it's not like they necessarily have the doubler, right? Like, yeah, just tar off as a general, right? Like until it happens, it's like not going to happen, but then it will, right? Like if this is a final turn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those decks that, like, is very, very powerful if you can get it to be, like, doing its thing. But it takes a good bit of setup, and what the combo I just described requires a, a really good amount of mana to, like, set up. You need at least six mana to cast into the Maw of Hell in the first place. Right. You need four mana to cast Torolf, and probably at least four mana to put a damage doubler of some kind on the field. Right. Now, this is one of those decks I also think that is very powerful. And if it happens once, your playgroup, if you play with a regular playgroup, <laughs> might like target you off the board because they're scared of that thing happening again. Right. But it could bo go both ways where maybe it is a deck where it's like everyone's kind of like, oh, like that's such a cool. They don't mind being one shotted because it's it's a really cool way to kind of go out instead of just getting commander damage out of the game. It's some sort of weird intricate combo that no one's ever heard of before. You know, I think that's a I wouldn't mind getting one-shotted by this i think that's really funny and really cool i'd be like wow that's you used into the maw of hell yeah i'm i'm good with that i'm i'm good with dying to that right all right what about your choice yeah, my picks... what's the what's the choice here baby right so let's talk about what the maw of hell is <laughs> because this is from innistrad i was i was waiting for this <laughs> I, you always come with the flavor and i love this so innistrad let's uh, so hell first and foremost is a plane in of itself Wait. this is not that plane this is maybe a portal to that plane or like part of innistrad itself this is a fissure called devil's devil something devil's i don't know devil's breath i don't know <laughs> i don't know what it okay. is it's called devil's something and it's a fissure that is in kessig in innistrad so what we're looking at on the art just to clarify this this artwork that we're looking at here it's got like this sort of horse thing they're falling kind of, uh, they're into falling the into fissure. they're falling into the fissure yeah. 
This is a soldier okay. on a horse okay. falling into the fissure that is like that spawns like demons and things Ooh. into Innistrad. Okay. Right. Oh god. So with that in <laughs> mind, it is in Kessig. So I think an interesting build for this is a Halana. <laughs> And Elena partner yeah. deck. And particularly, these two have weird ways, right? You get a lot of red mana from Elena. Weird ways. Wait, clarification. Are you choosing Halana and Elena partners? Yeah, like as the part- actual commander? No, no, no. Or Halana and Elena, the separate cards the separate as cards, partner commanders? The separate cards as partners. So okay, Halana, okay, Kessig cool, cool, Ranger, cool. and Elena, Kessig Trapper. Gotcha. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll just throw them up on the screen. I don't really, it doesn't really matter what they do. Uh, uh, the idea is just for it's flavor, a flavorful thing. but also yeah. there's lots of red and green. Red and green land destruction is the land destruction. <laughs> so that is, having, it, you're right. Having a that's actually good <laughs> flavor. <laughs> flavorful land destruction deck is very amusing <laughs> to me. I have thoughts about it. Oh my god! Uh, it's <laughs> it's not fun for anybody at the table. But if you were to come to the deck, the table with an, a, a Halana and Elena deck, I would not assume land destruction off the 100% bat. <laughs> that it was land destruction <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> so that's so degenerate oh my god <laughs> not even telegraphing that it's a land destruction <laughs> Oh my gosh! They seem like nice ladies, though. That's that's the that's the worst part. Especially is... when they're destroying lands. Good God! <laughs> Although I am now encouraging someone, someone, please put in the Discord or in the comments of this video that you that you actually built this because I would love to see that. Right, I but would it's got to be flavorful list. too, right? So like, correct. It's got to be like in a strad flavorful still. But I, yeah. Oh my gosh! I love that choice. That is <laughs> that really geeks me out. <laughs> Um, let's move on to the, uh, to my last card of the day. I think, I can't believe we're already there. This is the best card in the game. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the card that we're talking about is the best card in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's didn't say please. Uh, it's one blue, blue instant from throne of Eldraine. It says counter target spell. It's controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. So I don't think we've even talked about counter spells yet on the podcast, but I have a few opinions about them. Uh, we're not going to get into it too much here. I, I want to just say that this is for sure my favorite counter spell simply <laughs> yeah. for the fact that it's one very nostalgic for me because Throne of Eldraine is the first set that I was into magic yeah. during. So like it came out right as we were getting into it as a friend group. And I just remember all these cards and have a really um, yeah, I, unique and distinct attachment. I to remember these, getting like all the like art a and stuff. bunch of boxes. Of, of Throne of Eldraine and, and open it yes. with people. Yes, I remember sitting on the floor of my bedroom with you while like watching you open packs and we were like, we had gone to the LGS and just you had bought a box and we took it back to my apartment and we're just kind of cracking the packs together. Ooh, and nostalgia. Really fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why. But then also... <laughs> uh, I mean, come on. Is this Kenrith on the, on the art? So, I don't think so. I think it, it's it's one of the the knights from one of the sort of kingdoms of Eldraine. I believe that's what it is because that doesn't look like Kenrith at all. Well, it's a different artist. <laughs> oh, true, but no, because I think the storyline in like we only see Kenrith as an elk. Or right, is this the fairies taking him to Oko? Is that what that is? I don't know. Oh, someone inform us. Maybe potentially that. Although I feel like if that's true, it would have story spotlight at the bottom of the card, eh? No. <laughs> they only <laughs> there's only five like story spotlight cards that matter to the story. The rest is just like artist interpretation of the lore. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah, if, if someone knows that little factoid, please feel free to drop it down in the comments or drop it in the Discord. Whatever, because I would love to know what that is. But no, two, it's just so fun and flavorful and cheeky like i'd much rather pay one more mana than a counter spell counter spell is like the quintessential counter spell because it's two mana instant counter target spell that's it right but like i'd much rather pay one more mana just to say didn't you say didn't please. say please <laughs> like come on come on <laughs> <laughs> so fun uh, yeah no absolutely um, i mean especially in mill synergies to get into like the sort of nitty-gritty of this card it's a counter spell 
plus it does something and you guys all know i love my utility so if a card is doing two things at once for the same cost i am inherently more i think attracted to it so for things like mill synergies this is an excellent inclusion just to get more stuff into your opponent's graveyards by proxy just you know it's like if you ran something like murder but if murder said destroy target creature your opponent mills five cards you would want to run that because it's, it helps your strategy you, overall could you if somebody tries countering your spell could you use this instead of countering their counter counter your own card and then self mill counter target its controller yes i think <laughs> technically the way the stack works is yeah you could target the thing that's being countered yeah counter it yourself and then gain the 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 the, the yeah, self mill didn't say please would be on the top of the stack it would resolve so you'd get the effect first you'd self mill <laughs> which is a, such a stupid <laughs> Oh God, man! You can do this. Yes, you can do that. That feels I, like I believe the, that's true. that feels like the move for this card's energy. One hundred percent. I could absolutely see you doing that in a game, no questions asked, <laughs> and all of us just being like, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> is that a waste of a counter? Maybe, but maybe that mill mattered. That, that's true. And you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing I want to talk about too is like, why not have more stuff that's happening? You never know. Um, you might draw into like a recursion spell. If you've milled someone's creature into their graveyard, this was what I was going to say. You can run it in theft decks too. Oh yeah. If you're not milling to end the game, but rather milling to steal or gain resources from your opponents. Right. I think this is actually even better because in you, I mean, you have a pretty intense mill deck. Yeah, three cards isn't like a lot. Right, like that. that's all it's, you have to, if you're trying to mill out all of your opponents, that's a ton of cards you got to mill right. in order to win the game. <laughs> right. This is not going to be like the, the very best inclusion for something like that, I think. However, in something like, and again, this is the home that I found for this card, uh, Captain Ngathrod, which is a Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate pre-con commander. Mm. Um, it's a three black blue legendary creature horror pirate, clearly based off of Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. It says horrors you control have menace. Whenever a horror you control deals combat damage to a player, that player mills that many cards. At the beginning of your end step, choose target artifact or creature card in an opponent's graveyard that was put there from their library this turn put it onto the battlefield under your control and it's a three six so this this is great because that last ability yes you're obviously going to be dealing damage with all of your horrors and you're going to be milling your opponents that way but captain and gathrod will trigger even if you're countering something of your opponents and it'll put something onto the battlefield so if you're milling this, these sort of like incidental mills mm -hmm. can still benefit you in large ways and yeah, so i think sure. didn't say please would would be a great home in this and the flavor of captain and gathrod conscripting a couple of fairies to like do to be parked to the crew so i just started baldur's gate i'm just scratched the surface of it. I play it with my sure, wife sure. every every now and again. We play it together. Uh, it's it's fun to do as like a group more than just like lose a billion hours of my time. Sure, uh, sure. I'd rather lose a billion hours playing Persona. <laughs> but I think this is a mind flayer. I have no. You're talking to the wrong person. Right. I, I have no I know, idea. You've watched Stranger Things though, right? Yes. So the mind flayer is that big like cloudy thing. I think in Stranger Things. But the fact that this guy is wearing a pirate outfit is, is <laughs> absolutely the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Because they do not, yeah, they are sure. like more like sci fi, freaky, uh, you know, Eldritch Horror esque. Like the walls are made of like flesh and like. Sure, sure. So he's just like a, one of those, but he's like, I want a regular ass wooden pirate ship. It's very funny. <laughs> And he has a peg leg, by the way. Right. He has a peg leg. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I wonder gosh. if he like I, remembers I mean, uh, a part of his like uh, old self. I wonder if that's part mm, of the lore. Ooh, that's actually somebody really, who knows D and D really lore. Tell me who this is. <laughs> yes, please, please. Uh, me too. I would love to know. I, I really would love to know about that because. I mean, I'm I'm trying to get into D and D more. I've only played one little mini campaign. Please, it was like a month I long. Do, but if you ever figure out how to do an online session, I would. I want to play D and D so bad. We got to do that one day. We we definitely will. We'll put that on the on the to do. Hey, for sure. if you're down there telling us about the lore, if you DM. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, hop in the Discord and uh, uh, let and us know. One thing I wanted to know also, I think that uh, we're, we talked about last episode, I believe, I believe it was last episode about all the different sets that are coming out this year mm-hmm. in 2024. I honestly think that this commander, it's already great. Mm-hmm. Very, very scary to play against. But there will definitely be more horrors in Duskborn, House of Horrors, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm I mean, pumped this is going to be probably pr- like a, one of the premier commanders for all the cards that are going to be in there. So yeah, that's that's sort of my that's sort of my my spiel about didn't say please. What did you what did you do for this one, baby? Yeah, so I picked. <laughs> I think it's uh, an easy pick. I wanted to highlight a fairy commander from Eldraine, but I wanted to pick one from Wilds of Eldraine um, yeah. as opposed to the Throne of Eldraine. And so my pick is Obira Dreaming Duelist, which is a one blue, one black Ooh. fairy warrior legendary creature with flash flying. Mm-hmm. Whenever another fairy creature or whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. And it's a 2-2. Ooh, that's tasty. Yeah, it's like just a good, it's like a fun, good, it's like a seven cent commander Uh, yeah and i mean it's really great for a flavorful build on a budget too i mean the fairies are so so good in all in both eldraine sets you want to build just like a fun flying fairy deck that's not like super you know aggressive with your commander i like that choice thank you and um i think hold on let me check oh yeah yeah i just checked with my people i think it's i think it's that time of the time of the week i think it's that time uh it's the time <laughs> what time is it it's it's, it's Cress's chaos pick of the day baby uh, i'm glad we got there i'm glad we got there yeah uh, we got there it was so, tough but hey yeah i picked this card yep and it's because it's 81 cents and i was Whoa. like you know okay, what so this is... instead of picking a card that we would shoe in a commander deck why don't i just highlight a commander already oh, baby. that's under a dollar oh my god let's do it so i picked Anafenza the Foremost, which is oh, one shit. white, one black, one green. Whenever Anafenza the Foremost <laughs> attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on another target tapped creature you control. If a creature card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Abzan! <laughs> Abzan, baby! Yes, I... So, fun fact, I know this card. This was, I think, the third or the fourth commander deck I ever built. Oh, fun. And very quickly took it apart. I don't know, I don't really remember why. Maybe I just didn't have enough cards that synergized, and I was just sort of building out of my collection, and I was like, well, all my friends are beating my ass, so <laughs> I need to... And you, I need and something with three work. colors. Yeah, exactly. But I, yeah, I just it didn't work at the time. But ah, oh, this is great. I love this card. I love this card so much. I love this card. Pretty powerful ability, but not like anything that's going to go crazy. Or I think what's going to warrant removal is that second ability. Yeah, People are I not wanted. Really to, happy I, about I that. picked it particularly for that for the conversation. Because I know it's one of the big salty pet peeves of people who like graveyard recursion, play with graveyards. So when you have mm-hmm. something that prevents that, yeah, a lot, of, you know, what, what, what's the crypt? Oh, Tormod's Crypt. Yeah, Tormod's Crypt. Like some easy utility to prevent, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Millers or, or, or graveyard decks, right? Sure. But I wanted, sure. To, I wanted to pick your brain on on that as a utility because I, I, I like that as a utility because I'm somebody who plays with mill decks. So when people pull it out i'm always like smart how did uh, how did i not account for that i like it yeah in sneakier ways than maybe your commander but even if you yeah right even if i am bringing my mill deck and you do have your commander now i have to think about when this commander is going to come out because it's only three i'd say honestly like you could build this this is in a pretty good color combination for this is not something that i would do (laughs) you could build it based off of that second ability and make it a stacks deck okay like just make it a pure like you're not gonna do anything this game (laughs) and have it be like because here's the thing in a deck that's not based around that i think anna fenza being the commander with this ability she's gonna get targeted way more than you think just because people are not gonna like that ability they're gonna want it off the board right because even in non-graveyard decks when my stuff dies or uh, you know and if you're generally like a well-rounded deck builder you're you've got that 
extra variable. You can recur stuff back from your graveyard, even in decks that aren't doing that. So there's always some sort of hope. Even if your creature gets destroyed, you're like, ah, okay, well, hopefully I draw into my recursion and can bring it back. Can bring it back, can do something with it, exile it for benefits for a different card. Like, you never know, right? Correct, correct. So, like, I personally would, I enjoy the fact that that Anafenza does this, and notably, it's only for creatures. So Mm -hmm. if you're destroying enchantments or destroying planeswalkers or if people are casting instant and sorceries they're all still going to the graveyard and not getting exiled right so some of your like sorcery chainers it's like not it's not affecting everybody on the board yeah it's not going to be a complete oppressive uh sort of graveyard hate so i think this is overall i would run this still as a plus one plus one counter deck and sort of hope (laughs) that it doesn't get removed but it it's not my it's not necessarily my favorite sort of graveyard hate i would rather run something like leyline of the void sure or um just something more single target like tormod's crypt or um even something like what is that soul guide lantern you can tap it and just remove one card from a graveyard Mm -hmm. um so you can sort of pick and choose like what's scary in the graveyard and sort of remove it like that way right instead of it being a blanket uh, effect what i kind of like about this card is you have to build around knowing that that is that it's going to be removed right the more i think about it the more the more i'm looking at this card i think the design space is more of an aggressive plus one plus one counter deck Mm -hmm. that incentivizes your opponents not to block with their creatures because what happens when they block with their creatures that creature is going to die and it's going to get exiled so the whole point is maybe you build this as like an aggro pillow fort so like you're always attacking 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 buffing up creatures meanwhile and maybe playing some ghostly prison type effects some revenge of ravens to prevent the crack back being so intense I'd be interested um, I think in... that's probably the best way to build it. This is a great. This is a great selection. The goat on the card looks manic, and I love that. It's it kind of reminds me of the horse in our logo. Um, <laughs> in a way, this is kind of like want me to, our do logo you want me a little to have bit. A horse, do you, so you ride a, you ride horse and I ride goat. I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> But yeah, I I love this pick. Thank you for choosing this. This is very nostalgic for me too. So this was lovely. But now we got to move on to our Discord poll. Do we poll we our to? our Discord members. We do have to. It's part <laughs> of the structure of the podcast. Every time we do an episode, we poll our Discord members on a question, and we gather the stats and we talk about it here on the podcast so this week's poll is actually related to our last episode wherein we talked about board wipes and i wanted to talk about it a bit more and get everyone's opinions on it so i asked how many board wipes do you run in a deck there was one option you you could press red for zero blue for one green for two to three and orange for three or more (laughs) and the stats are uh as such Cress, would you mind doing the honors Yeah, so we had 6.25% say they don't use any board wipes. Which is interesting. That's the lowest. Yeah. I started with the lowest first. We're going to go up. And then the next uh, most is 3 plus, which I'm actually surprised there's at 12.5% that double the amount of people that don't play with board wipes play with that many board wipes. I was for sure thought it would be the other way around. Then we have 14.06% of people saying they only slot one in. And then me, I voted for that. one. So did I. And then uh, we have, uh, you know, the rest 67.19% of people play, two saying that they have two to three board wipes which i mean makes sense which is kind of like the sweet spot and also i wanted to add that the discord in general mm-hmm. a lot of people were you know every time we post the poll people are you know sort of chatting discussing it, it and afterwards. sort of chatting about it and a lot of what's in there is a people talking about how generally they're also running mostly one-sided board wipes which is something we kind of brushed on yeah. in the episode prior to this but what we were kind of saying wherein a board wipe should be Getting close to winning you the game, the ideally. Con, right? In my philosophy, uh, and, and in uh, some philosophies, it's just like wiping the entire board clean has to benefit you in some way, I think, if you're going to be wiping your own creatures. Um, it has to be due to your strategy or something, or it's got to be desperate. <laughs> Like, it's got to be like, okay, we lo- we completely lose the game if we don't board wipe here. But one-sided board wipes are great for finishing, and that's why I only really want run one, and typically it is going to be a one-sided one just because i would rather have a more interactive game and have my opponents be able to keep their stuff and sort of do all their things and i'd rather lose the game 
even even so, then um, sort of win and be a bit more impressive. I feel like the board wipe during the game is more like one of those heart of the card moments. Like, it, you know, I For pull sure. it off the top and then that's the board. You know, I would I don't want to like have a board wipe sitting in my hand for an entire game. Yeah, it's a waste of space. I agree. You know, and, and, and in the beginning, you know, if that's on your pull, you're like planning to use it as your win con. I would rather it be the win con that came to you and it's just the one in the deck. Because I think there's so many more slots that like the two to three or three plus, I personally believe that there are probably way more like synergistic beneficial cards you could run in the place of those rather than just a, a board wipe. But I, I will say I do have maybe I run more more than one in a deck that's designed around fast building. So I, I might have some of mm. those entirety board wipes in order to sort of reset the game where I build faster than everybody else. Yeah. Just to sort of like keep me at the same level of some other decks that might be, you know, higher level in, in comparison to speed and, and what's on the board. I definitely have some lists where I don't really run or it's like, it's like adjacent board wipes. So there's a, there's a card I think called Aether Wave or something something like that and it's a four three and a blue instant it says return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands Mm -hmm. and it's more of like a defensive board wipe oh look i know a thing or two about sending stuff (laughs) back to hands with my fish deck (laughs) god the fish deck from episode one i think oh yeah that's the legendary go back and watch episode listen to episode one if you uh if you haven't kiddos and find the find the context for that i will say that maybe i'll play my fish deck in uh you know to transition us to um ooh, something ooh, else ooh, ooh. uh there's a little surprise at the end of uh our spiel at the end of the episode we changed some things yeah. about the patreon yeah, but that leads will. us to that is a very smooth transition to the patron question of the day so if you do not know uh, if you subscribe to our patreon at the three dollar tier and above you get to ask us questions in a specific channel in the, in the discord that we get to answer on the podcast so today's question is asked by our patron night do night do thank you so much we appreciate your support and we are going to answer what's your take on fast mana in commander well i have a lot of thoughts <laughs> so i mean uh i mean i'll, I'll go it's it, mine's gonna be pretty short and sweet i mean it's gotta be part of a play group dynamic right and it has to be a choice to do that if you are if you as a play group are like hey guys i'd really love to run some like high powered casual or cedh games with you mm-hmm. i would love to like sort of build those decks and and play each other with them that's great run as much fast mana as you can and by the way fast mana we're talking zero cost artifacts like jeweled lotus that can tap and sack for three mana so it enables crazy things like being able to right. bust out your five cost commander on turn you're, one you're mulliganing like until you get these cards in your hand so that you can have that turn one right? correct correct and personally i have no issue with them if if someone's communicating to me that like that's the kind of game they want to play i'm, I'm just gonna be like i don't own any of those so right maybe not for me I, but I, if you're proxying them right in your play group like nothing wrong with that because that's the style of it, it's almost like a separate format in of itself right like cedh is its own has its correct. own metas right i mean commander so versatile with the amount of different metas it is depending on what right. rule you're playing at the rule rule zero I do have an issue. I find the people, I, and not to shame the patron <laughs> who asked this question, because I don't think they're, I think they're asking us for our opinion, not necessarily right. the kind of person that is, does this. But my brain is, mm-hmm. when people ask me that, it's more like, are you okay with my really expensive deck that I'm bringing here? And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to play a game where people are flexing their wealth. You know, sure. like it's one thing for, let's say, the Game Nights crews to have their fast mana built into the decks that they're playing for a show, then yeah. to bring your expensive deck to a play group that you've never met before or to a play group you have not had that conversation with. Right. I, I don't think there's a problem with having it on you, but I think yeah. the idea of being like, I want to play this 
to show off this deck there's there's got to be some sort of like ego balance there for me there's got to be a conversation i think i mean that's what it ultimately boils down to is you got to communicate what's my take on fast mana yeah you got to communicate that you have it yeah because that allows there to be no if, it, if it's open information everyone at the table will be privy to that information and be able to make decisions thereby right but i don't but want it to just... be on me to disappoint the person who brought that deck saying that mm-hmm. the three other people here don't have decks like that so i think there's got to be some sort of ego check going in beforehand before yeah. that conversation is what i'm saying so you've got to mm. know you know you got to not do it to show off your wealth you've got to do it because you built something that you're proud of right there's a difference for sure yeah right something you finally have the the money to afford or if you're somebody who proxies right that's a completely different conversation like it's not about the pieces themselves or the games themselves it's mm-hmm. it is a reflection this game is a game that costs money cards are worth there's a secondary market cards are worth in you know individually different amounts of money and fast mana yeah. happens to be what makes your decks more powerful quicker sure and, and so they're going to be more expensive cards yeah i think that check needs to come in first like a self check but then the communication of ob- i think the communication needs to be for pretty much any group sure always yeah exactly um if you're not exactly. doing that in general <laughs> I, I think you're probably going to find people are going to have a lot of problems with you at the table no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just about game experience at the end of the day. Like, right. prioritize what you as a as a pod, you know, if it's three or four or five players, whatever it is, you guys need to have a, a dialogue about game experience, the kind of game experience you want to have. Mm-hmm. Fast mana creates a certain kind of game experience that not everyone at the table is prepared to have. Right. But, but if everybody's down, everybody has something to participate right. in, right? It's totally different, right? Correct. My personal take, I don't like playing fast mana because I don't like the games to be that quick. I cherish interaction more than watching people's combos. I, I don't really mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't I don't really care about all these cards there's less flavor to to a deck i was gonna say it promotes it promotes less variation like with the style of play that it promotes high powered casual and cedh Mm -hmm. the pool for cards that work and like are valid in that format are so so condensed and it's not no variation right it's not no variation right everybody has their own place in that meta but in comparison to the grand scheme of all of the jank in the entire you know yeah. D that you I know. prefer the the game experience you're describing too is like maybe a bit longer games and just more interaction and getting to see what people's decks do and things right. like that. I, I prefer that experience for myself. So thank you for that question, I do. That is yeah. really great. That was a great little dialogue. It promoted a lot of fun, uh, fun discussion. If you guys have your takes on fast mana in Commander, you can drop them yeah, down and, in the and, comments and, below and, and i'd like to hear the people who enjoy those formats right talk about it from a place of what they like about yeah. it because i you know i'm not that player i, I don't think we Same. are either of us are that player particularly because if we're not proxying we don't have the money for cards like that <laughs> but if, if you know if you do and your play group does and it's it's fun to get in a couple of quick games like if you're like a, a more competitive player i'd like to hear why the format that not necessarily it's not a different format but that why that style of play within the format why that meta i guess mm-hmm. is in, is 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 uh enticing i guess or, or fun yeah this is gonna bring us into our little our little update about the patreon we have sort of changed things around in the past um, prior so to this. you should already know this by the time this episode comes yeah. out <laughs> We're still figuring it out, guys. <laughs> Please cut us some slack. But we got a new uh, benefit, reworked benefit for the $10 tier of our Patreon. So if you subscribe at the $10 tier or higher, you can now come and jam games once or twice a month with Cress and I and other patrons at our patron game nights. So if you subscribe to that tier, you get to be a part of the exclusive channel in our Discord, which is public. So, mm-hmm. But this is an exclusive channel within that if you are a patron at this tier and above where you get to plan games 
game nights with us, Cress and I, and the other patrons in the chat. Right. If you want to like a so smaller selection of, of people who are more tight knit in the community, this might be a good option this for be you. Super fun. Yeah. We, we want to play games with you guys. And this is sort yeah. of the best way for us to, to get in because we see everybody in the discord doing it all the time. So, uh, yeah. you know, and, and if you're, if you don't have the money, there are plenty of people in our discord already playing cool jam games. Pretty, yeah. Pretty we have a whole role in the discord about people who want to jam games yeah. called Knights of the Spell Table. <laughs> But anyways, guys, if, if you want to if you want to support the pod, uh, there are plenty of ways you can do that. You can hop in the discord, which is free to join. It's in the show notes or in the description of this video, whichever way you're uh, you're listening to our, our content, you can go and join that we have monthly giveaways in the discord where we give away MTG product every single month. That's completely free. If you're a patron, you get extra entries in that but you do not have to be a patron to get in on the action. We also have other tiers of our Patreon, you can check it out again in the show notes or the description. We've got a $1 tier a $3 tier, a $10 tier, and a $25 tier, all with amazing benefits. And then if you want to just su support us even more, hey, you can follow us on TikTok, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube, and give us a five-star review on your listening platform of choice. It all helps us out with the algorithm and getting out to more listeners who need to feel the jank. So Andrew, if you're listening, send this to your friends, man. Yeah, I really I hope you parked your car to listen to this Yeah, please. Bit, yeah, yeah, please. I hope after like an hour and a half... You got to your destination. To his destination. Yeah. Anyways, listen to episode two if you don't know who Andrew is. <laughs> um, but I think that's about time. That's that's all for us. Uh, Chris, you got any? Got a, a little something to say if, at the if end? If you if you play people? cards with your friends, you will um, be better for it. Oh, that's cute. That's really fucking cute. I <laughs> and I'll bookend that with my catchphrase, which oh, okay. is "Remember, kiddos." The spirit of the format is the gathering. And with that, we will bid you adieu. Adieu. Until next time. Or bye. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>